chapter 9.8 is about power series. So we're going to talk about uh, power series in a very general way. In, um, in later sections, we're going to talk about very specific power series. But right now, we're going to keep it really generic. And we're going to say a power series is um, a series that has uh, the terms that have some kind of a coefficient. So that's what this a sub n is, just some coefficient. And then it's going to have x minus c to the n um, factors in each of the term, right? So when n equals 0, it's going to be uh, x minus c to the 0. When n equals 1, it's going to be x minus c to the first, x minus c squared, and so on, until we get x minus c to the n. Um, c is some constant, and c is the value at which the power series is centered. So when we talked about Taylor polynomials, we talked about centering that polynomial um, at a specific value. We called it A in that, in that section. Here we're calling it C. Um, a Taylor series, which we'll talk about um, a little bit later, um, a, a few lessons from now, is just a specific kind of power series. And, and if you think about uh, the coefficients that we talked about in the Taylor polynomial, we can we can kind of say that that coefficient for a Taylor series would be the nth derivative of f evaluated at this specific value c over n factorial. Right, so that's the coefficient. And then we have the x minus c to the nth power there. All right, so a Taylor series is a specific kind of power series. So we've discussed Taylor polynomials. Now we're going to talk about power series in general, and then later on we're going to go talk about back about and I'm um, sorry, go back and talk specifically about Taylor series. So what we're really going to focus on today is is where um, we can see that a given power series that's centered at a certain place is going to converge or diverge. All right. So when we talked about Taylor polynomials, we talked about these polynomial approximations. Um, giving us a better approximation the closer we were to the location that we centered them, and also giving us a better approximation if we used more terms, right? Now we're talking about a power series where we have an infinite number of terms, all right? So now really the only, mm, the I guess we'll say the, the only variable, or the only thing that's changing here is how far away can we get from the location that we center the power series? and still get a good approximation if we add enough terms. Okay, so it's going to be one of these three. It's going to be, it's, you know, we talk about it, precisely one of the following conditions are true. The series might converge only at one value. In other words, the only place that we can get a good approximation um, from our power series is right at the value that we centered on. Or we might be able to get a, a, a convergent series if we stay close enough to where we center it. Or we might be able to get a good approximation and a convergent series for any x as long as we have an infinite number of, of, um, of terms. Right? So r is the radius of convergence. r tells us how far away we can be from where we center the power series and still get a convergent series. Right, and we're going to use the ratio test for this. All right, so we're going to use that ratio test, the same one we learned earlier in chapter nine. And what the ratio test tells us if, is that if we take the limit as n approaches infinity of the next term over the previous term, so a sub n min uh, n plus one over a sub n, then we're and that's less than one, then that then that series is going to converge. All right, so let's look at how we use that. Just a kind of a straightforward find the radius convergence of this series. This is a power series here, right? So we have n factorial times x to the n. And what we want to take note of here is this is a power series centered at x equals 0, right? Because this x to the n is really x minus 0 to the n, right? So these terms are n factorial times x minus 0 to the n. So it's centered at 0. And we can see that at that x equals 0, 
f of 0 would be this. It would be n factorial times 0 to the n. So 0 to the 0 gives us our 1. The 0 to the 0 factorial gives us a 1. So we get a 1 times 1 is 1. But everything else, now we have powers of 0. 0 to the first, 0 to the second, 0 to the third, 0 to the fourth. Those are all 0, so we get 1 for that. All right. So as long as we take a fixed value of x, we're going to look at this ratio test. All right. So we have n plus 1 factorial times x to the n plus 1 over n factorial times um, x to the n. So everything in these factorials cancels out except for n plus 1. And everything with these x's cancels out except for an x. I have x to the n plus 1, x to the n. I subtract the exponents, I get x. Right. So this is the limit I end up with. Now x is a fixed value, so x doesn't change. And I have the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 times x. So obviously this is going to be infinity. So no matter what x is, that limit is infinity. All right. And what does that mean? This, that means that the series diverges for any x other than 0. All right. So it converges only when x equals 0. The only way that this limit could not be infinity is if this x was equal to 0. All right, so this is this this series only converges at C. Its radius convergence is zero. It doesn't converge for any other location.